and get you taken care of. This has been the procedure the last couple days. We just gotta get her up in the chute, help the calf latch on a nurse, and then milk her down as much as we can. While doing this in the morning, uh, I wait to, to feed her until I'm trying to put her in the chute so that eventually she'll start to learn that when she gets in the chute, she gets fed and she gets her bag drained down. This is not a long-term situation or a sustainable solution, I wouldn't say, but it is what we have to do for now. I wash her udder first to make sure that I'm not getting little pieces of dirt or mud dropping in the bottle as I'm milking her. And then of course the, the front quarter where I know the calf is probably gonna be nursing, I wanna get that clean as well so he's not just swallowing that stuff. So while she's dripping dry, I'll go get the calf and bring him over here, get him started nursing. I'll get started milking. And when we're done with all this, we'll kinda see where the day goes. That's what's going on today on Farmer Tyler Ranch. While he's working on that side, I'll get started on the other side. He's doing a lot of head butting on this front quarter here, so I'm wondering how much he's getting. If I could get him going on this hind quarter, that would be, that would be a lot better. So I'm gonna give it a try. I've been trying this every day and he just, he does not, understand to get down on that one so i'm hoping he'll get it eventually but hadn't got it yet here let's try this one sometimes i think if i get some milk on it when he does finally get his mouth on it it'll taste right Once he kind of loses interest in nursing, then I'll, I'll offer him a bottle and just kind of let him top off his belly on that. The problem with nursing off of her is that he gets on this front quarter that does have milk in it. I, I check it every time. And then I can get him going on a hind quarter, but he just, if you're not just babysitting him and keeping him on it the whole time, he'll just switch back to the one that's easier to grab. So, um, by letting him do this, however, he's learning what to do. And then when we give him a bottle, when he's all done, then we know he's getting enough. Mm. Mm. All right, I guess he's done. Should do it. It's probably still got a little bit of milk in here, but not bad. Let's get back in the bullpen, little guy. When we're coming over here to nurse, he follows me the whole way. It's not really an issue, but when it's time to go back in the pen, he's really got no incentive to do that. So 
I'll probably have to end up carrying him. That's what I've been having to do up to now. Oh. He's getting heavier, that's a good sign. And he's small enough that I can just kind of guide him right through the bars here on the bullpen. When I built this, I considered making this little section here a gate. And now I'm really wishing that it was because it would be a lot more convenient to do all of this stuff if this just opened. So that might be an upgrade for the future. You want to go there? Keep going. She's getting it. So this has been the protocol for these two for the last couple days and it's not convenient. It's probably not very efficient, but it is keeping him alive. My goal or my hope is that he will begin to nurse on his own unassisted, but until I see him doing that or at least see signs of him doing that, I, I feel like I just got to keep doing this. Every morning, every evening, well basically any time I come and check on these two, there is no indication that he's nursed on her. But it's not all bad news. Today especially, I notice a difference in the calf. His ears are perked up a little bit more. He's more attentive um, and a little bit more mobile. I feel like he's getting around better. So I, I think he's starting to come around a little bit. It's just, it's going to take time for him to kind of recover from the state that he was in. Who knows how long he went without nursing. I'm, you know, it's really anyone's guess. Fortunately, he didn't go so far that there's no bringing him back. I, I think there is a path to success here. It's just gonna require a lot out of me, which of course I'm perfectly willing to do. And then the, the big thing that I'm kind of trying to avoid is I don't wanna become mother. I am giving him milk out of a bottle a little bit in the morning and then in the evening I give him a bottle as much as he wants. And, you know, I am running the risk of him just starting to associate me with food. But I think making him nurse off of her in the shoot in the mornings is helping to keep that from happening. All right, there's other things to do today. Let's go do them. I'm pulling in here at the winter pasture. There's a calf that I could not catch this morning that was born last night and I need to get an ear tag in it. In fact, there were two born over here last night. The first one was really easy to catch and this other one just would not let me get close. It's midday now. I'm hopeful that he'll be down taking a nap somewhere and I'll be able to get him. Well, I found her. She's out the window here, the black cow, and the calf is up nursing, not taking a nap like I was hoping. Uh, so I don't know, maybe if I hang out for a minute, it'll lay down and I can catch it. I sure hate to wait too long or else I'll be afraid that I won't be able to catch it at all. So maybe we'll just hang out here for a minute and see what happens. It's been a couple minutes. The baby just laid down. So I think I'll wait a couple more for him to get nice and comfortable. Maybe a little drowsy. And then we'll try to move in. All right, we got him. A little bit of patience paid off. While I've got the stock trailer clean, there are a few more places on here that I needed to get some welding done. So I wanna try to get that done this afternoon. I don't have a ton of work to do, but on the ends of these pieces that I added here to fill this gap, you can see that there wasn't anywhere to rivet that and it just needs to be welded. So my plan is to back the trailer up here to the corner of the shop with the extension cord that I have plus my Everlast uh, ACDC TIG welder has such a long lead on it that if I just back the trailer up to the corner of the shop here, I should be able to reach everything no problem.
think a project that needs to happen soon is making a welding cart for the Power TIG 210 because it's kind of difficult to move just like it sits. I like a lot of things about this welder, but I think one of the things I might like the most is how long this torch lead is. I, that is just amazing to me that with the welder set up outside the trailer, I'm gonna be able to reach all the way to the front to get this. This is gonna be the furthest weld that I have to do and everything else will be obviously a lot easier to reach than that. It's a new day and I'm jumping back on this project. I've done all the welds inside the trailer and I think I've had pretty good progression as far as the quality of the first one compared to the quality of the last one that I've done. I've got one more to do now and it's on the outside of the trailer so I really want this one to look good because up till now the only, not people, but the only things that are going to see the welds are the cows but everyone will see this one on the back so I want to try to make it look nice. Last well is finished and I just kind of want to show you guys the progression on this job starting with my first weld. So it's pretty ugly. I don't think I got very good penetration here. And what I have now learned is really my big problem was my setting here. And as I moved through the different welds on the trailer, I sort of adjusted and fine tuned the setting until I got something that worked a lot better than the way things were working here. Ugly as it is though, I mean, it's it's on there so we'll see i don't know how long that one's gonna last i may have to come back and fix it but if that's what i have to do that's what i'll do down here to the back of the trailer and these are starting to look a little bit better as my technique and my setting improved and if you compare to the repair that i made back here with the spool gun uh, these TIG welds are already looking a lot better than them. This weld on the outside of the trailer, I think came out the best, which is what I was hoping for. That's why I saved it for last, because I figured hopefully I would have learned something by the time I got to this point. You can see it is a little boogered up here on the top where I was going into some of the metal on this uh, existing cross brace. And the reason for that is just that I don't think I cleaned that very well with my brush. So when I got into it, it started um, getting some impurities in it. But the main body of the weld, I think is looking pretty good. Certainly a lot better than anything I've done with the spool gun. So now that I have come up with a setting that I like for welding on the stock trailer, I'm gonna go ahead and save that in the machine. That's one pretty cool feature about the PowerTig 210 is that when you do come up with a setting that you like, you can save it in the machine. And then when I turn it on again, I can just go to program number one. And I know if I'm welding on the stock trailer, that's the one I want. Well, the day's getting close to over, and I thought I'd bring you guys along to show you the evening routine for this calf. I've got a bottle here from what I milked out of the mother this morning. It's heated up to about, yeah, probably around 90 degrees by now. And we'll see how much he takes. Before I offer it to him, though, I want to take a close look at mother, see if I can determine if he has nursed on her at all. But also his level of interest in the bottle will be an indication of how hungry he is. It's hard to tell. He might have gotten on that good quarter there in the front, but uh, he just stood up and got next to her. He, and he's looking a little interested, a little hungry. Let's see what he does. So that has kind of been the problem. He, he's got enough know-how to know to try to nurse off of her, but every time he goes to that dead quarter and I know he's not getting anything. So 
well we'll uh i guess give them a bottle again and i have taken to closing the gate here in the little corral and letting her out here while i bottle feed the calf because she really does not like me messing with her baby even though i'm feeding it she she gets pretty agitated so rather than watch my back the whole time while i'm doing that i just put her out here All right, well, he basically finished it. There is just a little bit left in there, uh, but he's just kind of messing around with it now and not really drinking it, although he acts like he would now. Just need a little breather, I guess. May as well get the rest of it. There you go. There, he finished it. So the fact that he will finish this bottle tells me that he's still not getting enough from mother. He might be getting some from her, um, but the fact that he is up trying to nurse, even though he always goes to the dead quarter, you gotta figure sooner or later, he's gonna start looking around, you know, when he gets a little bit stronger and hopefully he'll find one of those other teats and this will all click for him and we don't have to do this every day. You guys figure it out. And of course you guys had to come see what was going on, didn't you? So that's where we're at with this calf. It is a ton of extra work every day, but I do feel like I'm making progress. He seems to be getting stronger, more alert, all signs that indicate that there is a pathway to success here. It just might take a while. But I guess that's gonna do it for this one. Thanks for hanging out with me today, guys, and I hope I'll see you again on Farmer Tyler Ranch.